But I've got news for people associated with the far left and Antifa. If you say that anyone can be Antifa by opposing fascism, then guess what? Revcom is Antifa. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day of the great Antifa apocalypse. The world is going to end violent civil unrest in the streets. By the time you're watching this video, the protests have already started. So I'm sure you already know what's going to, uh, what has happened. I certainly don't, because I'm filming this video. It's around 10 a.m. But I wanted to talk about a little bit of the backstory for today's events and some of the political ramifications. First, let me start by saying so many news outlets have denied that there is going to be any kind of protest or, or upset today. Time.com, for instance, but my favorite, Snopes, which called, called this event false. But hold on, I'm being a little hyperbolic here. Let's look at what they actually said. In their article, they said, is Antifa planning a civil war? Despite what random people might say in homemade YouTube videos, they offer no proof that any anti-fascist groups are planning even a skirmish. Scrolling down, you see claim. Law enforcement agents have announced that Antifa is planning extended violent unrest or civil war beginning on 4 November 2017. Rating false. So then sure enough, you see many other news outlets saying, no, there's no big civil war. There's no apocalypse. There's no uprising. And that's technically true. Are there supposed to be nationwide protests? Yes. Is it Antifa? Yes. But then it gets a little complicated. We'll get to that in a second. So why is it that these news organizations, these media companies, are trying to deny that anything's going to happen. Well, first let me say the reason why many people on the right believe there is going to be violent unrest today is that Antifa tends to be violent. I mean, they flat out say punch a Nazi over and over again, and they call everybody Nazis. They say that they can punch fascists, and then they call everybody a fascist. And we've seen the video of the bike lock basher, so we know Antifa does get violent. But a lot of activists on the left and activists in media are saying, this isn't an Antifa event. It's just a group kind of linked with Antifa. How does that make sense? I've been repeatedly told that in order to be Antifa, you need only oppose fascism, in which case 99% of Americans are anti-fascist. So why is it then that they're saying that these events aren't Antifa related or only peripherally, peripherally related? Well, it's because the group that's organizing today's protests is Revcom the Revolutionary Communist Party. And they have a chairman, Bob Avakian, who has a long-standing career going all the way back to the 60s. Now, last year, Bob started RefuseFascism.org with the aim of outing Donald Trump and opposing fascism, I suppose. In which case, this is an organized group of people. They dress in all black. They oppose fascism. They fly the banner of Antifa. Uh, they're Antifa. Now, What's surprising to me is that Revcom would, would want to be associated with Antifa, not the other way around, because Revcom actually is peaceful. For whatever criticisms you have about Revcom, they're, they're considered kooky and cultish, but also relatively small. They are peaceful. They show up to events with newspapers and pamphlets. They flyer. They talk to people. I've never, in my experience, witnessed anyone associated with Revcom being violent or attacking anyone. In which case, the protests that are planned around the country, I really do not expect to get violent unless external Antifa actors come and join in, which is very likely. Now, some people have, have speculated to me that perhaps the reason people on the far left, anti-fascists, anti-capitalists, don't want to associate with Revcom is that Revcom is overtly peaceful. They call for nonviolent protests, they don't get violent, and Antifa is violent, in which case there's a conflict of interest there because people on the far left associated with anti-capitalism, anti-fascism, want to tear down the system. They want to violently tear it down. Not everybody, but enough. In which case, Revcom, refuse fascism, taking the reins for this nationwide protest, can de distract, can deviate from what their actual intentions are. But I've got news for people associated with the far left and Antifa. If you say that anyone can be Antifa by opposing fascism, then guess what? Revcom is Antifa. If Antifa is a broad umbrella term, then it is. You can't look over to a group of right-wing protesters and see one guy with a Confederate flag and call all of them pro-Confederate or all of them racist Nazis. But that's what they do. Both sides do this to each other, okay? They look over to one group and they see a sign or banner and they say, that group is X because of one person. In Charlottesville, there was a guy with one, there was one guy with a Nazi flag. 
and everyone said they're all Nazis. Well, I would say they were mostly white nationalist, some neo-Nazis, and one guy actually had a swastika on, a swastika flag. In which case, it's important to note the distinction that Nazis tend to be white nationalist, white nationalists aren't Nazis, but to many people on the left, they look over and they see one monolithic structure. There's a, there's a lot, there's a, there's a decent amount of overlap. So you can't claim that Revcom is not Antifa, that it's only a peripherally linked group, and then try and do the, like have some kind of special logic where it doesn't apply to you, but applies to others. Sorry, Revcom is Antifa. They've been at most of these protests that I've seen around the country. They have refused fascism signs. They say no to fascism and they oppose fascism. So they're fascism. So they're anti-fascist, right? End of story. But now let's move on to look at whether or not these protests are actually relevant. Let's go to refusefascism.org and see what they have to say. Take to the streets and public squares and cities and towns across the country, continuing day after day and night after night, not stopping until our demand is met. The nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. And then you can scroll down and see a decent list of cities and locations for where and when to gather today. And many of these uh, events, these, these, these schedules, are they're active now as I'm recording this video and certainly I'm not hearing anything in particular. But now let's pop over to the New York Facebook event for Refuse Fascism. And we can see that just around 1,000 people are planning on going and 5,400 are interested in going. Typically, when you see numbers like this, it's significantly less, right? If a thousand people say they're gonna go, we're probably gonna see a hundred or two hundred people, if that. There's a lot of people who are interested, but interested usually means not going. When people say they are going, it means they might go. So, not pro it's probably not going to be too significant in New York City, but like I said, I'm already covering it, so you probably already know this by now. But let's look at other cities, just as, like a, as an overview. Because when we look at the other Facebook events, they don't actually show who's attending. Why? because nobody's probably attending. These events are probably going to be microscopic with no one showing up and not a whole lot happening. So in that regard, I think it is fair to say to some degree, there is not going to be a great ap apocalypse or civil war, but I'm still, you know, to bring it back, I'm still surprised and, and confused why so many news organizations are just outright saying it's not happening. The correct response, or I, sh I should say, the more reasonable headline is something like, it won't be the apocalypse, but there will be anti-fascist protests around the country, or, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if, if seven people show up in L.A., is there an anti-fascist protest? Yeah, there is. That's probably what's going to happen. I really don't think that uh, the world's going to end or anything like that. Revcom and Refuse Fascism, basically the same group, have never been particularly influential, though they try. You know, they make these propaganda videos, they make these propaganda newspapers, but for the most part, people don't like associating with them because they're a bit culty and weird. They're seen in videos goose-stepping. I've actually been at protests where they do, you know, like a left, right kind of march going down the street wearing black boots with their pants tucked into them and, and bandanas. So they're not taken particularly seriously by any large activist group. And maybe that's why a lot of people don't want to associate with them. It certainly would be hilarious if after filming this video, editing, uploading, and then going after the protest, all hell does break loose and this video is entirely wrong and the end of the world happens, but no. Let, let, I'll, I'll make, I don't like making predictions, but I'll make a prediction right now that I'm gonna go to the protest, it's gonna be small, I'll post some, some, some tweets, and I'll maybe get some uh, statements from some of the protesters down there on the ground and post that to YouTube. But I, I really don't think we're gonna see anything too significant. Keep in mind, New York tends to be peaceful. It's the West Coast that gets particularly violent with, uh, you know, a lot of the violence we saw from Antifa was Berkeley in the Bay Area. A lot of the protests and violence we saw with uh, Occupy Wall Street was also the Bay Area. New York, New York Antifa, they're not particularly aggressive, right? We, at the Mike Cernovich event, they marched around. We didn't see anything too crazy. It's, it's Berkeley where things get really bad. So if these other events on Facebook aren't showing a, a big following or interest, and New York tends to be, looks like it's gonna be the largest protest. I think it's safe to say this is gonna be a blip on the radar that most people don't notice, but I'm gonna go check it out anyway. So thank you all so much for hanging out and watching. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. If you wanna support my work, go to TimCast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like. Give nothing at all. My videos are always free and available, but with your support, I am able to go out on the ground and report on events like this. And even, 
as much as I try, travel around the world to some big breaking news stories and figure out what the hell's actually happening. So comment below. We'll keep the conversation going. Let's talk about this. I'll throw it to you. What do you think about today's events? What do you think about Revcom? You can check them out, revcom.us, and see what they're all about. They're the ones who are behind this big protest. And I'm sure many people on the left are going to be mad that I just plugged their website. But these are the people that are active in a lot of these events. So, so check it out. Comment conversation. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned. I may be live streaming, so you can go to youtube.com slash timcast slash live to check if I ever have a live stream up. Stay tuned because if anything else, I'll have a video for you tomorrow at 4 p.m.